Even in New York City, the name John Gotti was virtually unknown until December 16th last year. That night, Paul Castellano, the reputed head of the Gambino crime family, was gunned down outside Sparks Steakhouse. FBI agents have since testified that they believe the man behind the killings and the man who has taken Castellano's place is John Gotti. We were five, I was five years old. We moved from uh, 311 H Street in Prospect uh, Park, Brooklyn. We moved to Canarsie, and from five to ten years of age, living in Canarsie, it, you, it, in, in some respects, because of the fact that, uh, you know, my father wasn't there, and other kids on the block, their fathers were, so it was really like, uh, I guess they felt that maybe I didn't have a father, or, you know, my mother was a single parent, uh, so as many times as I would say, you know, my dad's coming home, my dad's coming home, he's doing construction, it's gotten to the point where the you know, other kids and their parents, believe it or not, you know, parents can be cruel as well. They would turn around and they would say, uh, yeah, sure, John, sure, yeah, your dad's coming home next weekend, right? Isn't it next weekend he's coming home? And, you know, that's something you'd have to live with. They're like, I would, I would walk away, I would sulk off and, you know, walk home and basically go complain to my mother, who was ready to fight with the whole block over my siblings and I. And I would say to my mother, you know, this is what they said to me, Ma, you know, and she would get angry. But, uh, you know, it's something I guess you have to expect because people really didn't have a, a clear understanding of what they were dealing with until the day he came home. He was a dynamic figure. I mean, look, if, 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 if everybody likes a winner, if you look at the way he comported himself, you know, his style, the way he dressed, uh, the way he would even saunter, he'd walk, everything about him, he was a winner. He was someone that would capture your imagination. Now, look, uh, you don't have to really like or respect what he was or what he did. I mean, you know, but you, you were looking at an individual that believed in what he was, and he conveyed that to you by just watching him walk and talk and his actions. He conveyed that he felt that he was right and he was a winner. You go according to, and again, this is before my time, he earned his way up the old-fashioned way. Um, he, he carried out a hit on a man named James McBratney, who was accused of kidnapping the nephew of uh, Carlo Gambino. Kidnapping and killing the nephew of Carlo Gambino. Uh, my father was, at that point, fresh out of jail. He, he was released from Lewisburg Penitentiary in, I believe, March of 1972. He was there on a hijacking case. And uh, about a year later, a year or so later, uh, the McBratney uh, killing was carried out. A short time later, my father was arrested for it, charged. Roy Cohn was his attorney. A plea, a plea deal was negotiated. He received a seven-year deal for manslaughter. He was sent away for about three years, uh, three, a little over three years. And upon his return, you know, basically now, having done that, he was like a, a legendary character. He was a larger-than-life character. He now had come home. He returned home, and he was about 37 years old. In the summer of 1977, he was 37 years old. And at that point, you're looking at this guy, you're looking at, uh, you know, John, John Gotti became a larger-than-life character, you know, having accomplished that. Uh, and he just, he rose through the ranks. He was very close to Neil Delacroix. He, he rose through those ranks. And it was reported that in 1985, and again, this is before me, that my father had carried out the execution of Paul Castellano and took the throne. He became the king of the volcano, as we call it. That's why so many individuals have respected my father, because the simple fact is that he, nothing was given to him. He was a self-made kind of guy. Uh, he was a, a seize-the-moment-take-control kind of guy. And people respected that. Tough guys respected that.